Good morning all. I am Dr. Nagalingam, Associate Professor from Lakshminarayana Medical College Institute of Medical Science, Puducherry. Today we will see about non-invasive ventilation. In this, these are all the topics we are going to cover. First, we will see something about review of basics, definition, goals of NIV, types, advantages and disadvantages of NIV, indications and contraindications, interface, modes of NIV, guidelines for initiation and termination, complications, evidence for use, and conclusion. These are all the few terminologies we should be familiar about the ventilation before we will see about non-invasive ventilation. The first one is respiratory failure. It is a syndrome where the respiratory system fails in one or both of its gas exchange functions, whether it can be oxygen uptake or carbon dioxide elimination. Respiratory failure may be acute, chronic or acute and chronic. Acute is almost life-threatening. Chronic is not, not so severe. There is called type 1 respiratory failure and type 2 respiratory failure, which we will see detailed about in coming slides. What are the most common causes of respiratory failure? It may be due to a problem in the alveolar filling process, pulmonary vascular diseases, and diseases causing airway obstruction, hyperventilation due to decreased central drive, peripheral nervous system, respiratory muscle dysfunction, chest fall, and pleural disease, and if there is any increased ventilatory demand. We will see most commonly, we will describe about the respiratory failure. That is called hypoxemic respiratory failure, also known as type 1 respiratory failure lung failure, oxygenation failure, and respiratory insufficiency. This is defined as the failure of lungs on heart to provide adequate oxygen to meet metabolic needs. The criteria we'll use is a PaO2 less than 60 mmHg on FaO2 more than 50 percentage, or PaO2 less than 40 mmHg on any FaO2 and SaO2 less than 90%. The basic causes are right to left shunt, VQ mismatch, alveolar hypoventilation, diffusion defect, inadequate FiO2. The second, com second commonly we'll see about the hypercaptic respiratory failure, which is also known as type 2 respiratory failure, pump failure or ventilatory failure. This is defined as the failure of lungs to eliminate adequate CO2. The criteria is acute, acutely increase the PACO2 more than 50 mghg or acutely above normal baseline in COPD with concurrent decrease in pH less than 7.30. The basic causes are pump failure. It may be due to drive, muscles and work of increased work of breathing. And increased CO2 protection, the right to left shunt and increased dead space. So if you see CO2 value, if it is increased, that is called hypercaptic respiratory failure. In hypoxemic respiratory failure, CO2 is uh, will be maintained the normal value, whether it, it will be normal mostly, or it may be sometimes low value also, you can see. That is the most common difference. We'll see individually about the type 1 and type 2 respiratory failure. The causes of hypoxemic respiratory failure are pneumonia, cardiogenic pulmonary edema, non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, pulmonary fibrosis, COPD, asthma, pulmonary embolism, pulmonary arterial hypertension, hypersensitivity pneumonitis, pneumoconiosis, bronchiectasis, congenital heart disease, shunts, massive floral effusion, pneumothorax, and pulmonary hemorrhage. The type 2 respiratory failure most common causes are COPD, status asthmaticus, drug overdose, poisoning, myasthenia gravis, poliomyelitis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, polyneuropathy, spinal cord injury, primary alveolar hypoventilation, obstructive sleep apnea syndrome, severe pulmonary edema, severe ARTS, myxedema, and tetanus.
we'll see some one case for example if you 75 year old patient present with severe copd and osi non compliant pap therapy but bears oxygen 2 liter per minute present to the hospital with acute exacerbation of copd after severe bronchodilator treatment the patient remained dyspneic wheezing and using accessory muscles to breathe this patient how will you manage this is the scenario you can see the lab findings and the chest x ray findings on examinations and basic vitals you can see if you go through the case scenario at the end of this discussion you will come to know how will you, how can you manage this kind type of patients the definition of niv if you see the definition non invasive ventilation refers to the delivery of mechanical ventilation to the lungs using techniques that do not require an invasive artificial airway for example endotracheal tube or any kind of tracheostomy tube the goals of niv are it provide time for the cause of respiratory failure to resolve and improve gas exchange to overcome auto peep to unload respiratory muscles to decrease the dyspnea to avoid endotracheal intubation and to avoid complications of intubations the types of niv if you see the two types are there the one is negative pressure niv the other one is positive pressure niv negative pressure niv is a history actually it was used mainly in 1900 extensively used during polio epidemics we'll see something about tank ventilator iron lung and the jacket ventilator hayek oscillator these are all we'll see these are all the called negative pressure non invasive ventilation nowadays everybody using positive pressure niv only that is positive pressure delivered through mask cpap bipap ab aps asv these are all the things we will see in the further slides this is the interesting picture you can see the those days how they managed now this is called a negative pressure ventilation it applies negative pressure intermittently around the patient's body or chest wall resulting in a pressure drop around the thorax the negative pressure is transmitted to the pleural space alveoli and creating the positive gradient between the lungs and mouth as a result gas flows into the lungs patient head is exposed to the room this is a picture <laughs> this is a big uh, ma this is a one interesting book um, martha mason who wrote a book about her decades in an iron lung they said at the age of 71 if you have time you can go through the book the book or name is pre the author by martha mason how does nav work the reduction that this is the basic uh, principles these are all the principles we are going to apply in the nav mainly it reduces the inspiratory muscle work and avoid the respiratory muscle fatigue it augments the tidal volume it improves complaints by reversing microatelectasis overcome intrastic peep enhanced cardiovascular function strengthen the airway and decreased co2 production this is this is how you can provide the through mask you can see the here is the mask is there through mask we are giving the mask is the other end connected to the ventilator through the pressure high pressure you can give you can ventilate the lungs the advantages it reduces the auto peep it reduces the airway resistance and improve tidal volume and pseo2 what are all the advantages of nav it is non invasive correction of gas exchange is better it improve lung mechanics it reduces the 
resistive work imposed by invasive ventilation it ventilates effectively with lower pressures flexibility in initiation termination intermittent application also you can see you can use sometimes and you can take some rest and again if patient deteriorates again you can through that mask you can ventilate the patient patient comfortability is much better if you compare the endotracheal intubation definitely through the mask ventilation the patient comfort is much better mental status also you can correct you will have sufficient time to correct the mental status it preserves speech swallowing expectation because obviously we are using only mask so through that we can our uh, patient can comfortably speak and swallow and they can expect the sputum also it reduces the need for nasogastric tubes it reduces need for sedation so you can mainly avoid the complication of endotracheal tube trauma injury and aspiration avoids complications of invasive ventilation like infection sepsis sinusitis gi bleed thromboprophylaxis everything the chances is very less compared to invasive ventilation it is cost effective also and in compared to all terms it decreases mortality associated with respiratory failure it assists in end of life care these are all the advantages we'll see the negative side the disadvantages you can see the picture how bad it can be also <laughs> this is divided into three types the complications the system related interface related and airway related so system related is slower correction of respiratory system the slower correction of gas exchange happens so time commitment and attention and gastric distension these are all the system related disadvantages interface related the leaks chances are very high skin necrosis rashes eye ear irritation and sinus pressure also it will increase airway related disadvantages are main complication is the aspiration and the limited secretion clearance because patient have to uh, Uh, spit it out all the sputum that is the so that is where the limitation is there we will see about the contraindications where where what are the scenarios the nib is contraindicated the mo most commonly cardiopulmonary arrest hemodynamic instability non respiratory multi organ failure mental state changes like uncooperative encephalopathy seizures patients these are all the scenarios you can't use nib inability to protect the airway if you suppose lot of secretion is there there is no other way you have to intubate the patient only recent trauma facial lange edema upper airway surgeries facial deformities edentulous gi bleed and surgery intractable emesis any tumor head and neck tumors extensive compression of airway like thyroid thyroid ca airway obstruction recent neurosurgery burns untreated pneumothorax these are all the most common contraindications of nib what are all the scenarios you have you should act quickly and you should change you can convert into non invasive ventilation to invasive ventilation if you see the parameters clinical parameters if the patient is keep on apnea is there stride or severely depressed mental status flail chest inability to clear respiratory secretions like excessive secretions loss of protective reflexes neuromuscular failure trauma to the mandible larynx and trachea these are all the clinical assessment the clinician should assess the patient and depends upon that he should act early and intubate early the next parameters we will see about the loss of ventilatory reserve in case of respiratory rate more than 35 breaths per minute tidal volume less than 5 ml per kg vital capacity less than 10 ml per kg negative inspiratory force it's weaker than minus 25 cm h2o minute ventilation less than 10 l per minute rise in pseo to more than 10 mmhg 
these are all the conditions clinicians should assess the patient and again intubate early the third parameter is the refractory hypoxemia alveolar arterial gradient fao2 is equal to 1 that is more than 450 pao2 or pao2 arterial alveolar pao2 is less than the ratio is less than 0 0.15 pao2 with supplemental oxygen less than 55 mmhg these are all the scenarios you should act early and clinician should decide according to the patient and they should convert non-invasive ventilation to invasive ventilation who are all the candidates for NIV? The candidates are mostly depends upon the clinician. The clinician should judge the patient clinically and according to that, he should act smartly. It's mostly depend upon clinical judgment, supersedes and cooperation of the patient, any dyspnea, increased work of breathing, hypoxemia or hypercapnia, cases of respiratory acidosis, clinical conditions like COPD, stable or and ex acute exacerbations, cardiogenic pulmonary edema, immunosuppressed, do not resuscitate conditions. Selected patients are COPD, pneumonia, facilitate weaning, asthma, OSA, OHS patients like obstructive sleep apnea syndrome patients, car pulmonial, ARDS patients, neuromuscular disease, restrictive thoracic disease disorders, cystic fibrosis, post extubation, post op respiratory failure, and the bronchoscopy. These are all the ca candidates for. NAV. We'll see evidence-based utilization of non-invasive ventilation and patient outcomes. This is the journal published in ATS, annual ATS November 2017 edition by Anuj Mehta. It, the rational is it strong evidence supports use of non-invasive ventilation for patients with respiratory distress from COPD and heart failure. Despite unclear benefits of NIV, other causes of acute respiratory failure, utilization for conditions with the weaker evidence is increasing. Despite evidence demonstrating higher mortality for patients who suffer NIV failure as compared to being with treated initially with IMV. If you conclude, you can see the results, uh, you can see and you can go through the journal also it is a very interesting paper. If you see the conclusion, most patients who received NIV did not have conditions with strong supporting evidence for its use with wide institutional variation in patient selection for NIV. Surprisingly, we found that all patients, even those without an SEC, benefited from admission to hospitals with greater evidence-based utilization of NIV suggesting a hospital effect that is synergistic with patient selection. Outcomes of non-invasive, this is another paper, is the case series. Now, outcome of non-invasive ventilation for COPD in the United States 1998 to 2008. An estimated Seventy-five lakh eleven thousand patients, two sixty-seven patients admissions of acute acceleration occurred from nineteen ninety-eight to two thousand eight. We used data from nationwide inpatient sample of the healthcare cost and utilization project from ninety-eight to two thousand eight. Since nineteen eighty-eight, HUCP and SAS collected patient level clinical and resource use data included in the discharge abstract on about five to eight million inpatient hospital stays from close to 1,000 hospitals. This represents an approximately 20% stratified probability sample of all U.S. acute care non-government hospitals each year. 
the outcome is temporal trends in the use of nippv and invasive mechanical ventilation as the initial form of respiratory support in patients hospitalized with acute copd the length of stay in patient in days for patients admitted in acute separation of copd grouped by type or respiratory used during the hospitalization this graph clearly shows what all the patients no respiratory f support imv nappv the modes we what we they used these are all the things we can see in this graph the ultimate conclusion is use early in the course of respiratory failure as a means of reducing the likelihood of endotracheal intubation treatment failure and mortality this is uh, one of the uh, cochrane database systemic review 2004 they present niv in copd exacerbation this is a gold guidelines 2017 multiple rcts support the success rate of 80 to 85 percentage shown to improve respiratory acidosis decrease work of breathing dyspnea compli and complications including vap and lvs in the hospital reduce mortality and intubation rates this is a gold guidelines this is called gold guidelines nav this is a particular case scenario you can see NIV the use of NIV in acute exacerbation of COPD. Large observational study twenty five thousand six twenty eight patients admitted with AE COPD. Early NIV use confirmed significant reduction in hospital mortality, hospital acquired pneumonia, duration of mechanical ventilation. This is presented in two thousand fourteen JAMA journal. NIV and stable COPD patients. This is the scenario you can see in Gold Guidelines 2017. NIV is increasingly used in stable, very severe COPD. NIV and oxygen therapy in selected patients with pronounced daytime hypercapnia, COPD, OSA overlap, clear benefits in both survival and risk of hospital admission. non invasive positive pressure ventilation as a weaning strategy for intubated adults with respiratory failure this is the cochrane database systemic review in 2010 by burns et al 12 trials of moderate to good quality compared to ippv strategy nppv significantly reduced mortality vap icu loss and the hospital length of stay total duration of ventilation duration of endotracheal mechanical ventilation it's all compared to ippv and the advantages it is mortality is decreased length of stay is decreased and duration of mechanical ventilation also is decreased compared to ippv non invasive weaning had no effect on weaning failures or the duration of ventilation related to weaning it concluded consistent positive effect on mortality and vap this is a paper presented in 2012 respiratory care nav can be used to allow earlier extubation in selected patients who do not successfully complete the spontaneous breathing trial it use in the setting should be restricted to patients who are intubated during an exacerbation of copd or the patient with neuromuscular disease non invasive positive pressure ventilation patients in this study by cochrane database systemic review 2013 by vital et al they included 32 studies nav is a safe and effective intervention for the treatment of adult patients with acute cardiogenic pulmonary edema evidence to date on potential benefit of nav in reducing mortality is entirely derived from small trials and further larger trials are needed so they are supporting nav in 
acute cardiogenic pulmonary edema conditions this is a review interesting review all of you if you have time you can go through it published in 2013 what is the role of niv for the immunocompromised patient immunocompromised patients are particularly exposed to increased infectious risk related to invasive mechanical ventilation so in those type of patients niv is very much useful multiple rct support whenever possible niv should be tried first antonelli et al jama 2000 they supported this they did research in 40 subjects with solid organ transplantation who developed hypoxemic respiratory failure non invasive ventilation versus oxygen support niv had a lower rates of intubation and mortality they this is the conclusion they did hilbert et al nejm journal 2011 they published this data they examined they conducted research in 52 patients with hypoxemia nav they concluded that nav had lower rates of intubation and mortality so for immunocompromised patients nav is very much useful this is graphs also you can see the this data published in 2015 in jama journal by lemle b et al if you see these graphs the trends towards better survival trends towards a decreased need for intubation and invasive ventilation no significant clinical advantage the mortality infection intubation and length of stay 374 patients they divided into 50 50 they concluded that there is no significant clinical advantage in mortality infection and intubation this is a paper published in 2011 respiratory care non invasive ventilation for patients with acute lung injury or acute res respiratory distress syndrome the use of nav as an alternative the uh, to invasive ventilation in severely hypoxemic patient with the ards PaO2 FaO2 is less than 200 is not generally advisable and should be limited to hemodynamically stable patients who can be closely monitored in an ICU by highly skilled staff early niv application may be extremely helpful in immunocompromised patients with pulmonary infiltrates in whom intubation dramatically decreases the risk of infection pneumonia and death these are all the points we discussed already the use of nav in the patients with severe acute respiratory syndrome and other airborne diseases has generated debate despite encouraging clinical results mainly because of safety issues overall the high rate of nav failure suggests a cautious approach to nav used in patients with acute respiratory distress syndrome or acute lung injury including early initiation intensive monitoring and the prompt intubation if signs of nav failure emerges this is the conclusions they made in stefano neva md again one more paper one one more original research paper we will see extubation of patients with neuromuscular weakness how nav will be useful in this scenario if you see the background successful extubation conventionally necessitates the passing of spontaneous breathing trials and ventilator winning parameters we report successful extubation of patients with neuromuscular disease and weakness who could not pass them here nmd that is called a neuromuscular disease specific extubation criteria and new extubation protocol were developed data were collected on 157 consecutive unweenable patients including 83 transferred from other hospitals who refused tracheostomies they could not pass the spontaneous breathing trial before or after extubation once the pulse 
oxyhemoglobin saturation spo2 was maintained more than 95 percent in ambient air patients were extubated to full non-invasive mechanical ventilation support and aggressive mechanically assisted coughing they concluded that continuous volume cycled nav through oral interface and mass mac with oximetry feedback in ambient air can permit safe extubation of unvenable patients with neuromuscular disease this paper published in 2010 by john robert beck et al so nav is useful in extubation extubation of patients with neuromuscular weakness non invasive ventilation reduces intubation in chest trauma related hypoxemia this is published in 2010 This is again a randomized clinical trial by Ganzo Hernandez. He concluded that non-invasive ventilation reduces intubation compared with oxygen therapy in severe thoracic trauma-related hypoxemia. If you see, uh, if you see how uh, how he did, how he come to the conclusion. there is a, he used 25 patients he used single center randomized clinical trial in nine bedded icu of level 1 trauma hospital inclusion criteria were the pao2 fao2 is less than 200 for more than 8 hour while receiving oxygen by high flow mask within the first 48 hour after thoracic trauma patient were randomized to remain on high flow oxygen mask or to receive nimv the interface was selected based on the associated injuries thoracic anesthesia was universally supplied unless contraindicated the primary end point was extubation secondary end points included length of stay and survival so he concluded in that way n uh, nav reduces intubation in chest trauma related hypoxemia what is the role of non invasive ventilation of patients with acute respiratory distress syndrome this is again one more paper by balani ji et al in uh, amr j respiratory journal of respiratory and critical care medicine in uh, 2017 he also concluded that nav was used in 15% of the patients with ards irrespective of severe category nav seems to be associated with higher icu mortality in patients with pao2 fio2 lower than 150 mm mercury here the objectives he mainly took to determine whether during nav the categorization of ards severity based and the pao2 fao2 berlin criteria is used nav in nav role of nav in asthma role of nav in asthma was not well defined alternative to invasive mechanical ventilation in patients who have failed standard treatment prevent need for invasive mechanical ventilation in patients who do not have substantial impairment in gas exchange nav in do not resuscitate patient conditions it's a controversy so ethical and cost wise also we should see it not yet known if palliative nav increases duration of life extends the dying process the benefits is patients definitely patient com- uh, comfortability and family satisfaction because if you see some tube in the mouth and uh, it's more dramatic one everybody will get anxious the family members so family satisfaction and the experience is much better in this non invasive ventilation and clinician perspective also is important and clarify goals of care expect parameters for success and provide experience to personnel and in this scenario further studies definitely needed the first case has been discussed the case presentation 75 year old history of copd asthma the patient is not responding to routine severe bronchodilator treatment also still the patient is dyspneic wheezing and using accessory muscles to breathe 
now all of you know the answer is multidisciplinary approach the answer is niv always it should be a multidisciplinary approach the selection of patients how will you select in this niv the selection of patient disease goals everything we saw already what type of patients you will choose for niv the diseases the goals of niv everything we discussed skills definitely skills matters it's always depends upon the respiratory physician nurse and other supporting staffs the team work definitely medicine cardiologist respiratory medicine specialist everybody interprofessional rounding is necessary monitoring and the protocols which they are following and updating the protocols and process everything is important in team work then last is the equipment obviously the ventilators mask adjuncts everything we need so it's basically is a multidisciplinary approach the selection of patients skills team work and equipment what is the successful applications of nav these are all the factors mainly depends on the success successful applications of nav what are the factors the physician respiratory physician should choose the correct ventilator choose the interface choose the settings work with the patient reassess and adjust the settings assess for successful and failure or weaning they should assess these are all the factors mainly influence on the successful applications of nav modes of nav what are the modes what are the options available in nav the first one is most common mode is cpap everybody will be aware of cpap continuous positive airway pressure ventilation nav with psv that is positive support ventilation average volume assured breathing support adaptive zero ventilation high flow nasal cannula delivered with the oxygen to maintain the oxygen saturation and humidification these are all the modes available with the nav these are all the machines you can provide nav with the various modes it can be divided into two modes basically pressure modes and volume modes pressure modes it's better tolerated than the volume cycled mode constant positive airway pressure that is a cpap by level by bipap mode and pressure support ventilation volume modes initial tidal volume range is 10 to 15 ml per kg is control and assist control modes this are all the various interface available in the market the mask size it is available only for nose or full face nasal pillows are available hybrid and oral types and total face also available this is a most commonly used oro nasal mask you can see the upper portion is a face palette does not obstruct the user's vision so patient comfortability is much better in this and you can see the exhalation ports it's provide continuous leak path in the circuit and quick release this card this red color one the card enables a fast removal of the mask and pressure pick up it this allows the connection of a proximal pressure line or monitoring device entrainment valve this valve allows the patient to breathe room air if pressure is discontinued as in the case of power failure head gear straps attached to valco hooks for secure placement this are all the hooks for secure placement this is the mask you can see everywhere in the icu this is the most commonly used this is the other type called helmet interface 
see patient how comfortably patient is reading something this is also equally tolerated effective in ameliorating gas exchange decreased inspiratory effort but less efficient the limited patient ventilator interaction is there because of that they are fully covered what are the advantage advantage and disadvantage of nasal if you compare nasal and oro nasal mask obviously nasal mask uh, almost similar only the only difference you can see is the permits eating definitely eating is much better with oro nasal and uh, function if no substructed is uh, that is the uh, one of the advantage if you see individually about all the uh, advantage and disadvantage if you take the nasal mask definitely comfort is much better less dead space created less aspiration chance of aspiration is less the disadvantages are mouth leak nasal resistance irritation nasal fillers are definitely comfortable spit hager mask already we saw and uh, again the mouth leak nasal resistance irritation is the most common disadvantages oral nasal mask better leak control will be there and mouth breather also it's possible chances of aspiration is high in this and uh, speaking eating this are all difficult in oral nasal mask and uh, dead space also will increase mouth piece little dead space and uh, no head jagger that is the advantage total face mask it is easier to fit maybe more comfortable for some people the disadvantages again for total mask is greater dead space and dry eyes aer aerosolized medications helmets one size fits all less skin breakdown and comfort the problems are rebreathing asyn synchrony medications and less respiratory unloading tips these are all the take home points full face is most commonly used in acute respiratory failure it explain the modality and provide the reassurance hold the mask in place until the patient is comfortable in synchrony with the ventilator secure the mask avoiding the tight fit passage of two finger beneath the head straps allow small air leaks if exhaled tidal volume is adequate skin patch to minimize abrasion and necrosis nasal bridge and skin head of bed elevated to avoid air aphasia bronchodilator administration preferably half nav or delivered through the circuit avoid nasogastric tubes these are the tips you can use in your day to day practice you can avoid the nasogastric tubes these are all the it improves the patient comfortability and definitely patient cooperation will be much better if you use uh, this small small steps how to how do we supply nipbv to the patient cpap applies a single pressure throughout the entire respiratory cycle you can see the graph it creates a pneumatic splint for upper airway it does not augment tidal volume but it is increase the frc use the higher pressure with the obese patient and os bipap mode nav with the uh, psv a specific pressure is applied to the airway for the duration of inspiration the second pressure applied during expiration that is called bipap the tidal volume varies determined by the degree of bipap patient effort and lung complaints average volume assured pressure support this called ap av aps settings set the tire target tidal volume to 8 ml per kg to the ideal body weight and adjust depends upon the patient pathology you should set the ipap limits as shown here this graph again we can see the tidal volume rate and the pressure how much we are using everything we can see in copd patients obesity hypoventilation respiratory disease neuromuscular disease these are all the conditions it is very useful you can see the how it's how it can be set it should not be used in acute setting where rapid ipap 
changes are needed to achieve desired tidal volume. IPAP does not change more than 2.5 cm H2O within one minute. It is used in mainly patients with chronic respiratory failure in need of ventilatory support. This is a basic setup of high flow nasal cannula oxygen delivery. This setup we used mainly in the last corona epidemic. High flow nasal cannula, many, many patients uh, got this kind of treatment. See, this is how it can be done. It maintains constant FiO2, increased CO2 clearance through nasopharyngeal red space washout, increased flow varies, and tidal volume varies. This is the adaptive servo ventilation, how we can apply. This is specifically used to treat central sleep apnea, designed to vary support according to the patient's individual breathing rate. It automatically calculates the target ventilation, automatically adjusts pressure support to achieve target ventilation, not recommended for patients with systolic congestive heart failure. It's not used in the acute setting. Again, this is the scenario. <laughs> Everybody know how to treat the patients now. I think everybody will be very much confident. If you see the first, first uh, before uh, starting, how we can manage the patient and in between, how will you manage the patient? Now, how will you manage the patient? So this is a series I want everybody should aware of this. What are the things you will monitor in NIV? It's a subjective response, physiologic response, objective response. These are all the things we should always see. How will you know NIV is a failure one? If you are unable to reverse underlying cause or disease process, unable to correct acid-based derangements, persistent hypoxemia, hemodynamic instability, altered mental status, edentulous, excessive secretions, inability to tolerate interface, older age. These are all the things you should accept that failure and you should change the treatment protocol. What are the complications? Already we saw everything. Just to go through that air leak, skin irritation, abrasion, claustrophobia, nasal congestion, sinus pain, or ear pain, mucosal dryness, mucus plugging, and pulmonary barotrauma, pneumothorax. If you conclude, CPAP is no longer a new therapy, stabbed positive. In 1977 only, they concluded that a patient who is sick enough to need CPAP is sick enough to need an endotracheal intubation. Now, the scenario is different. NIPP has radically changed the management of acute respiratory failure. Possible applications of NIV has increased. NIV is no longer confined to ICU, but is a regular ward out of hospital, pre hospital environment also we are using. Current research is focusing on improving the quality and safety of the devices and establishing new ventilatory modes in order to extend even further the indications of NIV as well as its rate of success. Thank you all. Hope you got some take-home finds. Uh, once again, thank you all.